Right, so I think I've discovered part of the problem I've been having with this thing. Um, at least certainly when I've been having the um, the riser card in there. And that is that this very end socket just here, that one there, has an issue. Now, I noticed in my one of my previous videos, I had the riser card now, I mentioned it's shorting it out. And I thought it was an issue with the riser card, and so I did some work on that. You know, I've, I was using the riser card in this slot here, which is the slot for the reference card. And I noticed that it was given the same issues I had before with the shorting out stuff. And um, what I've discovered is that if I look right at the bottom of the socket there, you can see it's broken. So if I bring this up a bit, try and get the angle right, get it straight, the slot is open right down the bottom. There's nothing stopping that slot. If you look at this one, you see it's got that end on it. Okay, that's the end of the slot as it should be, solid. This one doesn't have it, it's broken off. And if I go to the top, you can see there, get the focus, there you go, that's what it should be like on the top there. Same as that one, right? So, it's got that piece missing, which is why it's giving me trouble. When I'm using the riser card, it's not sitting lined up correctly in the socket. So, I'm suspecting I've done some more damage because I was doing some testing, um, checking some suspicions out on a uh, using the riser card for reference, and it was kind of working, and then it wasn't anymore. And I think it's blown something. I'm not sure what. So um, I've moved on from the oscillator control card. I haven't found any problems yet. I've, I've eliminated some stuff, but there's a circuit section there which I'm not sure of yet. So I'm going to be coming back to that. So um, that's that card there. I'm, I'm, it's three quarters tested. Right? There's one section which isn't finished being tested, which is where I think the fault is. But I've moved on from that for now. I'm looking at this reference card again because I, I, that reference voltage is all linked to it. So the reference voltage goes to the AC, AC DC converter card, which is here which then provides signals for um, the control card which then provides the loop signals for the oscillator card so they're all linked together, it's a big loop so I know the power amplifier is bad, I know that for certain right? there's definitely an issue on the power amplifier board um, I don't know about the AC to DC converter board yet there may be faults on there there may be faults on here, I believe there are um, but I the reference card has definitely got an issue right now. So, we're in my very first video. I was doing, um, I was getting a 6.95 volts, whatever it is, which goes to the power supply over here. Now that was working, but um, now I'm not getting there anymore. It's gone. So I'm, I'm concerned that when I was testing, that card has slipped down, shorted that, those connections out on that socket, and done some damage somewhere. Whether it's on that card or whether it's on the tracks going to the power supply. Power supply seems to be working, but that 6.95 volts isn't there anymore. Um, so, yeah, it's a pain. Yeah, anyway. Uh, right, so I'm trying to diagnose this issue with the power supply on the reference um, no longer being 6.95 volts like it's supposed to be. Now, I'm going through the troubleshooting reference here this time instead of trying to work it out myself. Just taking a shortcut, so I've got an idea of how it works anyway. Um, so at least I actually understand what it's trying to achieve. And I've gone through and checked off the various aspects in here. What's missing is the minus 15 volt in the floating and the plus 20 volts in the floating. The plus 15 is there, and so are the other voltages. As um, I've noted here, what they actually what they actually are, and um, so that minus 15 and the plus 20 are the ones which are missing from the same circuitry. Now, I did that testing by um, using my my extender card here and I've um, put some headers on there and I've just means I'll clip on. So I've got one there and I've got another one here. And I've, I actually need to put another one down here on pin two and down here on pin one and pin five um, because those are the pins that users for doing testing. So I th rather than trying to you know probe on them and things like that, just I'll stick some headers on and clip on. The other thing it does here is it's got this jumper on here. And what I'm actually doing is injecting a 6.95 volt supply 
into that pin which is the common on pin 77 and on that pin there which is pin 60 um, and jumpering between pin 75 and 77 together as per the manual which is states down the bottom here sorry about the moving camera it's just a bit hard to do this with a fixed position um, so and I'm doing that that basically simulated what I did on the power supply card when I had the thing out in one of my very early videos of this unit I think it's like video uh, number two or number three or something like that. I think it might have been maybe number four um, part four maybe um, but I actually put this took this board here out wired up to my power supply and did testing on the board outside of the unit um, and what I'm basically doing here is the same kind of thing but I'm, I'm injecting that 6.925 volt signal back into this which should be generating then the um, voltages which are missing which it isn't which means it's blown some transistors most likely um, most likely it's blown transistors um, I think what's happened say because of this card being sitting too low in that slot because it's being broken um, it's shorted it out and because it's been shorted out for a period of time it's blown those regulators are probably overheated and blown so bugger that's what it seems like anyway I've actually put like a spacer on the edge of the card now so the card cannot sit too low so hopefully it doesn't happen again but this like I'll tell you know I had all this fixed before I'd fix that supply I'd fix this you know power supply module there I'd fix the reference and now it's gone again so that's kind of frustrating I've sort of taken a step backwards there but um so yeah now I need to go fix the power supply again at least it seems that way Right, so I've been uh, doing some testing on this power supply, um, which has failed again. And um, you can see I've stuck my temporary bodge in here of my op amp running that thing. It works fine though. Um, and what I've discovered is that this transistor has failed. This transistor here has failed. That's Q17. That's Q7 has failed. And Q8 has failed. So um, replacing these is going to be interesting. Um, that's a bit of a challenge. I might have to um, see what I can do about that. Q7, that's easy. That's just a uh, 2 and 3 9 6 I've got some of those. Um, so, yeah, but the rest of the power supply seems okay. It seems to just be those two at the moment. I'm just hoping it hasn't damaged the current um, ones here. These ones supply a small amount of current to drive the gate of the transistor. This is shorted. So I'm actually concerned it might have blown that. I hope not. Right, so I've been working on this power supply. I've put some temporary parts in. I've ordered some more parts, but uh, this one here I'm concerned about because it's a special high current um, transformer, so, well, uh, P-Sync. So that's the one which is blown. I tried to actually get, just pull it out of the heat sink here, but it's not actually done it. I think it's pressed in. I'll get there eventually. Um, I'll make sure the new part goes into that same heat sink when I get it. But this one here, um, there's a little part like this, a little heatsink on there. And um, this actually a heatsink that I put on, didn't actually have one. Anyway, so that part blown, this one here gone, and that transistor there gone. So if those are the parts I've taken out and replaced. Um, with temporary parts, and this heatsink here is really not adequate, but um, it'll be good enough for me to actually confirm whether things still worked or not. And um, do some other testing around abouts. And Maybe I'll pull cards out to reduce the loading on the power supply until I actually finish diagnosing each card or something like that. Anyway, um, so I'm going to put this back in and see if this actually works or not. I should also state that the parts I've used, these are TIP31 um, and TIP41. Is that right? 32? No, TIP31, TIP32. Um, for the MPN PNP pairs, I don't know if they're going to work. I've got no idea. They may be completely wrong for the job, but they're kind of the right kind of thing. So we'll see. Here we go. All right, so let's do some power supply tests. I've got this hooked up to test point on what's that number five? Do it. Yeah, pin five on that side for the common, and I'll hook up onto other pins with this in a second um, so this will be measuring um, if I go between 1 and 5 that's measuring minus 15 volts 8 and 5 is mo uh, plus 5 volts and 2 and 5 is plus 15 volts 
All right, so it's this bin here. That will be um, minus 15. And then pins around the back here will be plus 15 and plus 5. All right, if, if it's working. Then I'll come and test these points over here. All right, I'm just going to pulse the thing on and off as I'm doing it in case I've got something wrong. First, so doing that. That's such a shame power. What a time. Interesting. Anyway, minus 15 is there. That's interesting. Um, maybe it's charge capacitors. I did play around with it. So let's do this one. It's plus 15. This one here. Plus 5. Those are correct. So these ones are right. I was playing around with it before, so it's probably charged up slightly. So this one here. So that's on pin 77. And I need to measure uh, 79, which will be minus 15 volts if it's working. Um, I need 83, which would be plus 20 volts. And 81 plus 15 volts. So I'm going to do 79, 81, 83, all side by side. So I'll start at 79, plus 5, that doesn't sound right, uh, it's basically minus 15, that's really odd. Um, okay, we'll go to the next one, this is 81, plus 15, that's correct, 83, plus 20, which is correct. So the minus 15 isn't working. Um, Right, I should also point out I'm, I'm injecting that 6.95 volts over there, and I've got these two terminals here bridged. Um, and that's all for the enabling the power supply sections. Uh, without that 6.95 volts, you get rubbish readings. Th that goes between 77 and 60. Right. Um, in order to inject that voltage into the power supply. So um, yeah, I've got an issue with the minus 15 volts still. You're getting there, at least I've got one of the supplies working. Alright, so I'm looking at this negative 15 volt supply which has failed. Um, which I replaced Q8 and I replaced Q7. Q7 is with the original part, Q8 is with a replacement part. Oh, get it back in shot. Um, so that should be okay. Q7 is shorted out, which worried me a little bit because it makes me wonder if this CR14 is blown. Um, so I need to check those resistors around there because it's obviously not pulling down to minus 15, it's pulling up, which means it's that resistor there could be burnt, it could be that which is gone, um, which prevents it from uh, switching this transistor here on. So I need to check all these resistors and that part and um, go from there. And hopefully, I'll get that going again. Alright, so let's measure these resistors. And this one here, R10, it's measuring as um, about half a mega ohm. And it's not supposed to be anywhere near that, it's only supposed to be ohms. So um, I believe that's got an open circuit, which is why that's not working. So I need to look at that. So the R10 is supposed to be a 3.9 ohm resistor. So I was going to measure that again, show you. So R10 right here. As you can see, no, it's doing 44k now. But yeah, it's it's uh, definitely not 3.9 ohms. Okay, so here's a resistor. I've just taken it out. Measure it individually. There you go, it's just all over the place. Mega ohms, and that's definitely not right. Your closest I've got is a 3.6 ohms. Um, I don't think 0.3 of an ohms is going to make too much difference. And being slightly lower value means it's slightly has a little bit less heat to dissipate. So hopefully it'll be all right anyway. Um, I'll show you where the part is actually, so you know which one I'm referring to. It'd be easier if I did it on the screen, but uh, well, it'd be easier for you. Not so much easier for me anyway. Um, so there's the negative regulators in there, and that's there's R10 right there. So that's like the main current pass resistor. Everything passes through that. So that's, that's, that's obviously that is a fuse. So um, that's blown, and hopefully save the actual transformer, which is. Fine, so I'm putting a part back in, obviously. 
Right, I've got that resistor replaced and uh, power supply card is reinstalled. I need to put this on DC volts for a start and let's see what happens when I try it this time. So I want pin 79 minus 15 volts. All right, we're back. Those are all looking good too. The 20 is looking slightly low, but okay, it's there. Um, let's check the other ones. Is there too? Yep, all looking good. Right, so we have a power supply again. So I was going to leave that in for a minute, and I just want to see how hot these. Um, Heatsinks get on here because it's only temporary. I just want to see what they can manage. I do actually intend to install a little fan in there because I do notice that the cards are getting a bit warm while the heatsinks on those other ones are getting quite hot. So I'm actually tempted to put a little fan right there um, to blow across all those heatsinks in there to help cool them because um, yeah, these power supply problems and these are a bit of a pain. Right. Right, so this is the modification I've done to this power supply. Um, I've added this fan on here, just tacked on. It's not the best, but um, it will just add some more cooling onto it because it's all running quite hot. I took the power amplifier card out and it made it run a bit cooler, um, which will help. But I thought, well, if I stick a little fan on here because I know that this heat sink here is undersized. This one here is probably alright, but this one's undersized. This one here is a bit undersized. So, um, yeah, those both undersized there. These are getting quite hot as well. So I think well, if I chuck some airflow across it with this little fan here, that'll do the job. Um, what I'll likely do is actually put a bigger fan on the side, like a, maybe a, a um, an eight centimeter fan, something like that, something a bit bigger on the side there. Um, I might be able to squeeze one in there because it's got some ventilation holes on the side. If I space it out a little bit as well, um, that'll give some really good cooling in the power supply. This is running off the 15 volts power supply. Um, so it's going off this TP8 test point here. Um, it's got a hilt onto that. So yeah, um, yeah, let's see how we go.